Let's pivot, look. You referenced Niski, and I'll tell you what, mate. This is my other team. Because you know what? I'll do the joke now. Oh, don't worry. I, this might shock you, but I got baited by a team called Carby Cop. But to be fair, that was only the first four weeks of this year. But enough about your career. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Because obviously, but I didn't get baited after that. Obviously, I like sorry, I very quickly gave up on that team and lost all hope. So again, you've done nothing about that. So don't worry about that. And that's just an awkward way to phrase it. But here's the, here's the point. The team that I always get baited by, always Yamato, is SK Gaming. Same with the last squad. Like, you could see the highs of Exit Cake. You could see those times that look, by the way, obviously irrelevant is like a fucking sleeper OP. Like, actually might be the best in this role. Like, dude... I didn't know anything about this Korean bot lane coming in. I'm even more hyped now, but I'm scared because this is what they do to me every fucking split you out. What they do is, in the BO1s, you're like, fuck, they're really good, actually. And you know what? They're almost even beating the best team. Shit, if they can keep this up, and that whole if they can keep this up, it's like, and in the BO3, they're not too bad. It's that low bracket BO5, they always just betray you completely, or BO3, like, they always just, at the end, they just never quite have enough. But here's the sad thing. One ticket for the SK roller coaster play. I'm in again. I'm fucking in again. They've got me back in the mouth. Because this, dude, this ball, it actually looks like surprisingly good. Like, I don't know how they've scouted this random career, but dude, this team actually looks good. You know, in a league where half the time is complaining that there's only G2s any good. This team's actually starting to look decent, man. They're, this kind of, like, they should, at least for now, they're baiting me. What's your thoughts? I'm, I'm liking SK um, a lot. I, I think massive improvement in ball lane, very obvious. I don't like the community reaction. It's like, I, I've been fighting the good fight because people say, like, the, the conversation is like, wow, they're getting imports. They're so fucked up. I didn't get ERL players. It's like people don't understand the issues that there is GMing at all. It's like all, all these ERL teams, when they want to sell their players or oh, trade their players mid speed, they're fucking, they want bank. Yeah. They want bank, which is ridiculous, you know, uh, all things considered. It's like these players sign for better teams and they get worse deals and they get stuck in those teams and then they bring these two koreans over at the time i didn't know much about no. them rahel and luan i knew that rahel had did, did well in in damwon and i heard that luan like from the games i saw i watched two games i was like this guy is just there to have a korean support for yeah. rahel yeah. and I, a massive improvement it's like extra kick and dos put had such a low bar a massive improvement in bot lane i i can sense some of the similar issues when it comes to sk in terms of how they progress the game. Because I think that Irrelevance is a fantastic lane. I feel like Irrelevance is like Alfari 2.0. I, I think that in terms of his impact, I think when when it's very streamlined in terms of how his champion scales, I think that Irrelevance is a fantastic player because of he can generate gold. Like this is his strength. So when yeah, he's yeah. generating gold on something that is not scaling so well, like a Renekton, I don't feel his impact the same way. Right. And I hope that Eski kind of recognizes it. Niski the same way. I think Niski, when he plays the champions, they get to push and get to roam. It's like the usual shtick. When he plays Tristana, I, I want to see him farming the side lanes more. I want it to be more centered around the camps and actually like in, in winning positions, play the map in a way that generates just revenue. I, I feel like often when it comes to teams like SK and sometimes I feel the same with BDS, the, the thing that is holding them back in my mind is the idea of just focusing on farm, getting to the key breakpoints, and then just doing a Nash setup. But instead, I feel like the communication sometimes lands like, we are stronger, we should fight. And then they're pursuing fights that are not necessary. And in, in the in-between, they're getting caught, they're taking fights in the jungle that are not necessary. That level of awareness, if they manage to adapt to that, and irrelevant, and uh, of course, Niski begin to actually farm side lane better through the conditions that they create through early game, I think that this could be a, a very, very lethal team. I think just... The main thing, like Luon and um, and Isma, I think in terms of their fight selection, could be a little bit better. But Rahel, I think that in my mind, Rahel and Ice have been like the two best performing ADs. And this has been like a super signing because you watch the last game that he played on Kaiser. Like Rahel has this aura about him is that when you press tab, he finished second item, you know that he's going to be impactful. I don't feel the same when I think of a player like Noah. It's like yes. you see his items growing in the inventory and it's like, yeah, but... He's not the focal point of this team, yes. so I don't really care about Noah having gold. Rahel has has presence. Same thing with Ice, Kazi too, too, to some degree, of course. Now Vitality is doing bad, so I can't blame Kazi. I think Kazi is really fucking good. But Rahel has that aura, and I think it's a massive, massive plus. I'm I'm excited for SK. I, I like SK a lot. I'm I'm on the I'm sure. on the train for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll even say as well. It's I was even quite cynical when I saw the bot lane picked up your mouth. I even thought to myself, maybe what they've done is just get some literal like the meme of like some bot 
boring Koreans and just tell them, like, look, you're not going to be the focal point. You're just going to go even. And then we're going to let Irrelevant carry the game. But then, <laughs> then you watch the Ryle guy himself is a fucking carry. Like, like obviously, everyone saw the clip. He's given everyone the fucking business right now. He made the super guy look fucking stupid, didn't he? Like, yeah. the joke is the super guy's talking like he's going to be deaf to invite. Like, Bro, anyone Korean can give you the business right now, as Ice and fucking Rahel have shown. So, you know what? You have to beat level one of the dojo before you go to the fucking top and fight the guy who has like a demon spirit inside of him who fucking does a 700 mile ahead roundhouse kick that knocks your head off and all the ancestors come out like you're fucking you're skipping ahead you're in the final boss already you're at level one mate chill out so the problem I have goes like this though when we come to this team I actually have a question for you which goes like this I noticed when you were talking about the teams that are flawed and what you would do differently, so BDS in their own way, obviously Vitality is a massive one, right? People are going to hear and that you have like a simplistic thing you want them to do instead. Basically, what you're saying to them is instead of trying to do everything or do everything, just do this, like set up for this part of the game and that's where your strength's going to be. Maybe for this guy, tell him just do play these champions, play this certain way, streamline the game, basically, is what I'm saying, right? The problem I have is this. This is where terminology ruins conversations because people in the modern day, for some reason, spam that term band-aid way too much, mate. And I don't think they realise, to me, a band-aid is like, when, it's like the analogy, you're injured and you're just covering the injury temporarily. Like, the band-aid's something you do to, like, win this match or win for a week or two. I, you're not talking about band-aid and you're talking about streamlining the concepts, right? Part of the issue, as we alluded to, we actually, with Vitality is, I do feel like sometimes people make the mistake of thinking if I have a group of good players we can do anything we want and it's like well that's not even really true by the way for the best teams in the world like if you go to the LPL or the LCK unless you're like the absolute best team of all time pretty much everyone has a set way of playing a set, and a player that knows he's never going to be the carry resource and that he's only going to get certain champions and that he's never going to be the guy doing the gank at certain point you know what I mean I feel like everyone has that so I, I would say it just shows your approach to the game more like your, your style is once you once once it's a bit of chaos you want to like reduce some of the signal noise and pare it down to something that's that's reliable, right? I, I think that over time, like there's so many great examples. It's like super teams failing is exactly that. You have yes. five great players that have a vision of how the game should be played, and there's a conflict. JDG last year, one of the greatest teams, they had a very, very streamlined approach to the yes. game. It, it was it was repetitive, it was precise as all hell, and that is a winner. It's like always the teams that win championships play their games in a very, very similar yes. way. I think that Genji is a very unique team in terms of having like a wide spread just because of how good their players are. But most of the time, the truth is there. It's like T1 functions super well in very specific circumstances. C9, another great example of, oh, this is a roster of a lot of great players. But in terms of how they draft, they have this e they had this ego about them in the previous years that showcase that they thought that they were good enough to play it all and that is like the the biggest mistake that you can make and it's such a common trap because scrims can really really delude you and blind you from the truth that's why we see teams like Tom and Cope picking Caitlyn like that that has to be like such a big big delusion that you're having success with this in scrims in terms of how that transfer on stage or like a lot of these teams are picking nidly like that's another one oh, that sure. just that yes. is just fueled by the delusion of scrims and the proximity to how the games will actually be played on stage and I think uh, you know, dude. I, obviously, you don't like to, you know, crush people's dreams and tell them they're worthless or whatever. You know, when you want people to believe and dream. <laughs> but I do think, as as harsh as it sounds, every time I see a Western jungler lock in Italy, I just want to literally pop up and go, "You ain't Canyon, bro. Put that away. Put that away. <laughs> That's for trained professionals only. You know what I mean? Like." There's certain, there's levels you have to, again, there's levels you have to unlock you out. They haven't unlocked Nidalee Jungle yet. You know what I mean? I assume. You haven't unlocked that yet. You just go back on that Sejuani, you'd shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's like, I think most most teams, they're legit looking Game of Legends. They're not looking like at the weighted win yes. ratios. You pull up like Nidalee, it's like, oh, Nidalee's actually doing fine. She's 45% win ratio. You pull up who's won, it's like Kanavi and it's Canyon. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. it's like, what the fuck are you doing, you know? <laughs> I know. And it's like, <laughs> come on, man. And it's like, Scar is actually not doing that well. He's like 58%. He's not OP. Look, Mordecai is just beating him. It's like, yeah, but... It's like top esports versus these fucking random ass teams in this fucking yes. <laughs> this playing portion of LPL. It's like you have to look at the actual matchups and if like great teams are winning with champions, it doesn't make them great, you know. 
But it's like when it comes to SK, just to, to round it off, yeah. I, I think the key thing for me, just I hope that over time they define the roles as much as possible. And then I think that Isma and Luan, they have the challenge that they need to piece it together in a very, very sh short period of time. But I think that Isma is lacking in terms of his game knowledge department, in terms of how he should approach the mid game. I feel like he's skipping beats and I get like the ERL feeling from how he plays sometimes. He has like a decent early game, but if, if the, the early game doesn't pan out in the one, two, three, I feel like Isma kind of loses his mind a little bit, you know? I feel like he, he views the game in 30 second segments when a jungler needs to view things from like a 10 camp perspective in terms of how you map everything out and the beats that you need to hit. So uh, my concern is, the main concern for SK is that these are issues that they had in past alterations too. And even though they have fantastic players that can carry games and win BO1s, uh, in the long run, uh, I could see like BDS beating them, Fnatic beating them, G2 sure. beating them in the BO5s and the BO3s too. For sure. I, have, I have one more SK related topic. It's, it's not yeah. actually about the specific lineup now. It's about Exekick. Here's my question, Marto, because this is one thing I hate about League as an eSport. First of all, because it's so closed off compared to Counter-Strike, for example, you do have these scenarios where when you get benched, you just sit on the bench. Like what I love about Counter-Strike gives it that is at least within a month, you'll just be on another team. Look, it might be at a low level, but I'll get to see you play again. I'll see if you're good. I'll see if you can work yourself back and forth. Right? The sad thing about the fact this guy's on the benches, I do think League is a game where it is like that old adage, like out of sight, out of mind. Like, the better this Korean bottling does, everyone's going to even forget the name Mexican. Yeah. And actually, by the time you get to the off-season... They might not even be the name on people's lips. They might just be not even in the LEC. And I think that is actually a travesty, Yamato, because I do think, even though that very first split last year, yeah, he was a bit overhyped because like the league was a bit weak and they just had that little run, you know. Maybe he got overhyped then. But I do think that the eye chest showed this guy had real talent. Like, this guy put the carry in AD carry, mate. Like, he could absolutely be someone who could carry a whole game for you and could be really, it's clearly his high skill level. The champions he was picking showed like a level of like confidence and aggression you want in a young player people don't know he's only 20 right now like he's still a very young player but he's got a little bit of experience the idea this player might actually be like cast away and he might just not be a player anymore i think it's wild because the stupid thing is even though he certainly individually had his own flaw like he had he could absolutely end the game and by the way when you put all those zos in the team fight sometimes he might just get blown up and lose the fight immediately that could also happen but i think the saddest part is this yamato as far as i can tell the main problem he has is that he just demanded he had to play with dos i'm not even yeah. saying it to diss the dos guy he just because here's the the thing I don't get about that Yamato, he saw to me he sort of pulled a power move that you can only do if you are like a legend already. You can't do that when you're the upper gun. You don't have to like in that scenario you can do that. But my analogy would be that's like if you're a strong swimmer just diving in and trying to save some guy from drowning. It's like mate, you better be sure that you can. That you're a lifeguard. Like you might be good at swimming yourself, but he might pull you under, mate. And then if, if you don't let go, you're both gonna die in this analogy. So I think I think the metaphor is pretty up there. So because to me the saddest thing is Yamato. This guy, in my opinion, should be in the LEC right now. I, I can look at a bunch of teams. I, I could name the names. I don't have to. There's a bunch of ADCs this guy is better than. But if the whole thing is he has to play with DOS, well, I think a lot of people are out on DOS, including SK Gaming. So I think that's the sad thing to me because I, th I don't want to see a world where next year this guy doesn't play. I, th I thought he really had talent. I, I wanted to say exactly the same. Like the, the, the condition that he plays with DOS, like DOS had one of the worst support performances, like in, in of, of all time in recent memory like we had some horrible supports yep. in the early days but we were very very terrible and I, I want to say the exact same thing like latching yourself onto those I think that it, as they broke out I think that they had an advantage it's kind of like that whiplash thing where like he he was told to like practice his three, three three time swing and he just knew that that's what he's going to get tested on so he's just practicing it all night I think in, in similar fashion SK uh, the ball lane the Lucian, Nami, Yumi, Meta carried over for such a long time. It's like they played it in the ERLs, they, they played together in the ERLs, and the amount of volume they had on those matchups and those champions was super, super clear. So the test was always, how are they going to do when things move away from that direction? Because the difficult part of our league, of course, is like, you need to... You need to basically survive the test of time. You can't just function under a very specific meta if you're a complete ball lane. And I think that that's where the Exa Kick Dos ball lane were looking good. It's like they're playing Yumi, Lucian, the Zeri. He was popping off, he was doing well. And then over time, uh, the meta shifted, and I think that they, they lost all of that steam. They, they lost all of that force. And I think that uh, in, 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 in that 
situation Exekiko has put himself in, it seemed like his desperation grew and his precision just fell off a cliff over time. Uh, I, I think definitely this is a player that could do more, a lot more than he has shown. Uh, I'm just thinking from from the perspective of what he would have to do again, because there's so many players like waiting in line and there's going to yeah. be like a shuffle, sure. like Kalis is coming in, Crowny is not playing. Like, I'm surprised that he decided to not be busy. Like, I, if I'm him, I'm fucking busy. Like, he needs to be busy. He's Especially because, bro, the be fact busy. that he's French, you'd think get in the LFL team, you know what I mean? Just, just start playing again. So I can be busy. You have yeah. to be busy. He shouldn't slow down at all. Just be busy. Be busy. Make sure that people, like, uh, like as you said yourself, it's just out of sight of mind is very dangerous. Like, just like, make tier lists or whatever the fuck. Just make sure that people know about you. Because sure. because that's how GMs work. It's like word of mouth. It's like a lot of GMs, they don't know shit about the game, so they rely on the opinions of others. And that's a whole other topic, but <laughs> there's that. Yes. Right, let's pivot. By the way, if people don't know, I, I like to break the fourth wall. I'll just explain. If people wonder, how can you have spent 40 minutes on two teams? Because I don't, it, first of all, it's not a communist system. I don't have to spend equal amount of time on each team. Spoiler, if I don't like some team, I won't fucking talk about you, Dafcon. Secondly, that's like the, that's where like the toxic part of me came out for a second there. And then secondly, uh, and also that was the, uh, it's the way it was my own intrusive thought, pretending to be someone else talking to me that I got angry at and then ranted at, but enough about my style. Right, uh, then uh, what uh, I would say is this. Obviously, I also tailor it to the guests. Like, there's certain teams I think are more interested to talk about. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.